this episode of Empower 305, City of Miami Mayor Francis Suarez. I realized that we had to do something extraordinary uh, to capture and captivate the news. And we did that with crypto. We did that by going all in with Bitcoin. And I think it set a new narrative for what Miami is. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Empower 305. Episode two, to be exact. Who's on episode one? Well, that's your city manager was oh number God. one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Oh, you man. guys have a little inverted, but that's he, he okay. It was awesome, but I know you're going to kill it too. CEO and COO, but that's okay. It's all right. still low. Uh, I'm your host, David Janot, the city of Miami's Office of Communications. Now, listen up, folks. I hope you all came ready for this one because Bring this it. podcast today, Bring it. we've got the one, the only yeah, see, city I, of Miami mayor. All right. <laughs> Francis Suarez. Welcome to the podcast, sir. Well, it's good to be with you. It's good to be uh, number two. Uh, <laughs> and life can always be number one. So I appreciate being number two. And our manager will hear from it from me later. Uh-huh. But uh, but anyhow, it's awesome to be with you and the whole team that is uh, exciting me with all this great tech equipment that I'm looking at. Uh, That's how we do it. That's how I we love do it. it. Well, you guys have always been super professional. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate so, that. Now, we've got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about with you. And I mean, all right. I mean, it's definitely safe to say that you've been busy, right? Yeah. Now, Miami's always been that destination city for tourists and visitors, but in your tenure as mayor, you have found a way to make the 305 a more desirable place to invest, to put down roots through, you know, key things like tech, innovation, and resilience. Uh, I mean, you found, like I said, you found a way to make us more world famous than we already were. So now that you've been reelected as mayor, can you, what can you tell your residents, your stakeholders, um, what can they expect from you in your second term? Just what do you have, you know, on the table this time around? Well, I think the first thing and the most important thing that they can expect from me uh, is the same thing they expected from me in my first term, which is to bring it every day, right? To get up early, to work tirelessly, and, and to understand that we live in a world that is more disruptive than it's ever been. And the rate of disruption, unfortunately, is accelerating. So cities in America, not just Miami, uh, they have two options. The first option is to run from that disruption, to fear that disruption, uh, which I think is not a very good uh, choice. And then I think the second thing that they can do is run towards the disruption, is to accept the disruption, is to understand that, that the only constant in our lives is change mm -hmm. and that we're going into a generational inflection point as a country and as a world. And we need to embrace that difference and we need to see it as an opportunity. And I think. I've seen it as an opportunity. Um, we've tried to go forward on a variety of things that would differentiate us, uh, make us special, mm -hmm. uh, make us more special than we already were. And it's working. I mean, all the KPIs, all the key indicators are pointing in the direction of massive amounts of success. Now, let's talk about a what, would, what most would see as a simple tweet about a year ago that you, you posted that kind of went viral. How can I help? How do you kind of go viral? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I was at home yeah. um, going through, you know, sort of my Twitter account, trying to relax a little bit. And, you know, all of a sudden I see this tweet come, come on my board that says, uh, on my timeline that says, hey, what if we bring Silicon Valley to Miami? Mm. And, you know, that had been a 10 year passion project for me. Uh, for 10 years, uh, we had been in this community, many of us, uh, you know, from Manny Medina to Melissa Medina and Emerge uh, to, you know, Tony Gonzalez and, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, Felice and, and Matt Hagman and so many others. Uh, I've been trying to create this technological ecosystem. And, you know, the, the natural thing that came to my mind was a reaction that I have every single day when I'm working as mayor, which is how can I help? Mm -hmm. You know, what can I do to advance this cause? Because this has been our cause. We have been trying for 10 years to create a profound tech ecosystem. And with that tweet, we got a tremendous uh, lightning bolt sort of like shot in the arm um, that made a, what would otherwise be a 10, 20 year process into a 10 month process. Right. Now, you know, one of the things that you also have the world talking about, the news, the blogs all over, is cryptocurrency in Miami. Now, there's a lot of hype around the Miami coin. Can you help clarify for some of those residents what this digital currency will, will do for the city, how it will benefit the city and our residents? Yeah, I think first, uh, going back to that sort of David versus Goliath analogy, as, as, as the David in this equation, in terms of uh, not being the biggest financial center that New York was and the big financial center that Silicon Valley and the Bay Area was, 
I realized that we had to do something extraordinary uh, to capture and captivate the news. And we did that with crypto. We did that by going all in with Bitcoin. And I think it set a new narrative for what Miami is. And that brought, you know, uh, the Bitcoin conference here from LA. That brought FTX to invest $200 million when they could have gone any uh, of 10 options that they had. That brought uh, eToro and blockchain.com, which just did a huge uh, title sponsorship at eMerge. Uh, that brought uh, XBTO that named uh, the Inner Miami team. So it's brought so much activity, economic activity, resources for this community. Um, and all because we dare to to be different. Yeah. We dare to to um, to innovate. Uh, we put you know Satoshi's white paper on mm -hmm. our website. We um, now have two employees that have been paid in Bitcoin, uh, which is which is extraordinary. Uh, and and you know we're one of the first cities uh, that has created something called the Miami Coin. So the Miami Coin, just to explain it, is basically. Uh, it sits on top of a, a blockchain that's called Stacks, which hashes onto the Bitcoin blockchain. So there's a Bitcoin nexus between Bitcoin and Miami coin. And it was a, a, a coin for which the mining benefit, right? In Bitcoin, the mining benefit goes totally to the miners. Um, and, and, and by the way, this is hashed onto the mining blockchain. So there's a, a Bitcoin mining aspect to this. But in, in the case of Miami coin, 30% of the mining benefit goes into a digital wallet for the cities. Now, we thought, you know, this is successful. You know, maybe it does three million in a year, maybe it's five million in a year. And I think there were many that were very skeptical and thought, three million or something. Yeah. You're lucky if it's 300,000, you know? In three or four months, it's done about 20 million. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, the brand of Miami is so strong. We're so strong in, this, in crypto that uh, it's created a flood of, of excitement and, and, and I'm excited about it. I feel like for those who don't believe in crypto at all, you, Miami, is going to make sure that they believe that this this is the future. This is the way. Well, it's even better than that. Like, yeah. We're now taking a portion of our Miami coin money. We're staking it. And we're going to give a, a Bitcoin yield to all of our residents who have a Bitcoin wallet. And so they're actually going to they're actually going to benefit from their government's uh, innovation. Uh, so imagine you live in a city, your government innovates, it generates revenue for you, and then it gives money back instead of charging you taxes. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's just a, an earth shattering thing and I can't wait that's what we take the next step. That's awesome. Well, listen, if you guys want to put me on that Bitcoin payroll, I'm definitely for it. So. Well, you, you got it. It's really easy. I did it through Strike and you can do it anytime. That's awesome. Well, you know, and kind of going back to what we were talking about, you know, with your tweet and how it just sparked this, this energy, it also feels like that tweet was part of this, but overnight, you have made Miami the new tech capital, or at least heading in that direction. How did we get to that point and uh, how is tech impacting our community, our economy? Well, when I saw the tweet, I realized, you know, I can't say that the tweet was intentional in the sense that I didn't think it was, gonna, I didn't know that it would go viral. Yeah. But I realized after it went viral that there was something special going on, mm -hmm. that there was something different. And so I tweeted 800 more times in the month of December only. Jeez. Okay, it's a 27 million impressions for a tweet that got 2.9 million impressions. So what's interesting about the tweet, by the way, is we reproduced the tweet December 4th of this year. That got 5.6 million impressions. <laughs> So that just goes to show how much the Miami movement has accelerated yeah. in a year, almost 2x, a, a massive uh, a social media presence. So, uh, you know, so so what, what happened was, you know, with remote work and with the, the pandemic, where we're relatively open, while a lot of cities were relatively closed, you had a lot of people coming here to Miami and they realized that they were colliding with other people, with other doers and innovators, while a lot of cities across America were pushing them out. Mm -hmm. We were inviting them in. And once you hit that critical mass, Miami does it works its magic on you. You know what I mean? You have the sun, you have the weather, you have the low taxes, and now you have a critical mass of capital and doers. We brought a trillion two hundred billion dollars of assets under management in sixteen months, yeah. and according to PitchBook that just came out, we did uh, three point six billion dollars of VC deals, which is a two hundred percent increase from the pre-pandemic year. Yeah. Wow. In, in order to keep the economy growing and remain strong, you know, you have to be resilient in more ways than one. And you know, you recently went to uh, COP26, a climate change summit amongst sure. other top leaders, you know, around the world, seeking to make our world a, a safer, cleaner place. What did you learn when you were there, and what actions are you going to be taking back to make sure that we have a Miami for generations to come, and to have our Miami forever? Yeah. Well, like you said, we have a, a brand that's called Miami Forever, and we mean it. We are one of the only cities in America, probably in the world, that is dedicating hundreds of millions of dollars to making sure that we are adapting to what Mother Nature's throwing us. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, on Earth Day of this year, 
we pledged carbon neutrality through C40. So uh, we're also mitigating and, and trying to reduce, if not eliminate the effects of our carbon footprint as a city. So, you know, the last thing we want to do now is create a climate tech ecosystem mm -hmm. so that we can start finding ways to reverse some of the effects of climate change. And I think that's, that's what our generation and the ones that follow will be focused on. Um, you know, for us to be here forever, for our children to be able to benefit from the things that I benefited from, to be able to, you know, swim in the water, uh, in the bay, and, and see the aquatic light that we see, and enjoy the corals, and then go to the Everglades, and you know, we have to be good stewards. Like any asset, any precious asset, you have to protect it. You have to take sure. care of it. And I like to say, our, uh, you know, our ecology is our economy. Our environment is our economy. They're not two separate things. They're not antagonistic. You don't have to pick one over the other. And that's the way that we feel. That's our philosophy. And as you translate that philosophy into action, uh, it creates tremendous benefits. Uh, now, for those of our listeners, our, our loyal followers who are watching this, the set might look familiar to you. But um, I feel like the Empower 305 podcast is kind of taking a page from, from your book because it seems like you thrive in these settings. Uh, at least for the last you know few years, you've been empowering people through your channel, Cafecito Talk. Yeah. How uh, did that come about? And what do you think that your audience is gaining from those conversations? It came about because when I got COVID, um, one of my uh, advisors, uh, former Congressman Carlos Cabello, said, hey, I think it'd be a great idea if you diary your experience. And I said, oh, okay, well, that's a little scary. You know, <laughs> what if things don't go well? But I was in good shape. You know, I was healthy. I was eating right. And I said, you know, I think the risk of something wrong going wrong is, is minimal. And I, and I want to show the people that not to be afraid. You know, I was, I was sick. I was the first person or second person in Dade County to get sick. Um, probably the first elected official in the country to get sick. And I realized, you know, the best thing that I could do is make pe 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 people feel better by, by being transparent about sure. the experience. So I did it and it was wildly successful, like beyond my, my wildest expectations and imaginations. And I realized that we have this very powerful portal, which is social media, to be able to communicate with people. And I, I also remembered a, a, a lesson I er learned early in life. If you're not telling your story, somebody else is going to tell it and you're not necessarily going to like their version right, of it. Right. And, and so social media gives you an opportunity to tell your story the way you want to tell it and, and not let other people define who you are and put their spin on who you are. Uh, it allows you to be authentic. It allows you to be transparent. And, and then, you know, in this Miami moment that we're converting into a movement, you know, I realized that I had to tell the story of what was happening. I, you know, people don't realize the inbound that I get, right? They don't realize how many people I visit with. They don't realize how many means I have. And, and the Cafecito Tech Talks did a few things. One of the things they gave, a, a, they gave people a portal into who I interact with. I was going to say that, yeah. Right, which is uh, these incredibly exceptional people. But I think the second thing is they allowed me to weave a narrative, the new narrative of Miami, um, what we're doing. And when people started seeing story after story, one that stacks up to the other, it creates that new narrative in people's minds like, hey, wait a second, there is this critical mass. Hey, wait a second. We, we can go down there and create. Wait a second, now it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, you know, that was the, the reasoning behind it, the thinking behind it. And it's been a year that I've done it. I know I've done several hundred uh, Cafecito Tech Talks and uh, and they've been wildly successful. Very, very high to you. You're, you're a powerhouse, man. You just keep going and going. It's like, it's, you just... I, I, listen, I have some advantages, one of which is I'm fairly young yeah. and energetic. So are you. And I think, you know, you have to, you have to lean into those things. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, uh, the position of mayor here is one where the bully pulpit or the, or, or, or the ability to communicate is a very, very important asset. It's a very important resource. And that's why I'm so glad we have such a great communications department. You know, I rely a lot on my communications department and we work well, really well together because uh, again, we, we've got to get our story out there. We've yeah. got to explain what this government is doing and how I'm leading in a different capacity than than, uh, than just what normal government officials oftentimes are, are expected to do. Absolutely. You, you touched on this a little bit. You were talking about uh, your health. You know, I, I love to run. I know you love to run too. Yeah. Um, I've also noticed that you've bulked up in like the last year and a yeah, half yeah. or so. How do you manage to stay fit and make time for family life and, and everything you do and have going on as mayor? Well, I integrate both of them. Yeah. Part of, it's part of, the, part of what I do. Like I work out at home uh, three days a week with my wife. So you're, you're getting sort of the family and, and the workout together. Uh, I think the other thing is I take my, try to take my kids to school um, at least three times a week. Yeah. So I get um, an opportunity to spend that like locked in time with them no matter what. That's awesome. Uh, and then, you know, I think, I think for me, um, 
living a life of high a, a performance, right? A life where you have to perform at a high level constantly. You've got to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of others. And you've got to, you know, eat right. You've got to uh, take vitamins. Uh, you've got and you've got to uh, also work out and, and and put yourself mentally and physically in a place. And, and spirituality is a huge issue for me as well. Mm -hmm. I think my spiritual, uh, you know, I was watching a Denzel Washington video today. Where he was talking about spirituality, and uh, you know, uh, it's incredible. It, it's such an important fundamental part of who I am. And gives me the ability, uh, you know, to, to center myself and refocus myself, no matter what the circumstances are. Absolutely. Well, you're definitely you're doing it, doing it well, and I think it's obvious to a lot of Thank folks you. out there. Um, now, you know, before we sign off, in in one sentence, would you sum up your take on Miami's future for us? My my take on Miami's future is limitless. It's limitless. I think the sky's a limit. I think we're the epicenter. We can be the epicenter of the world. Uh, and I think we're the capital of capital because we are right in the middle of five mega markets. There's five of the largest markets in the world, which is uh, New York, Silicon Valley, South America, the Middle East, and Europe. And neither one of those five markets is closer to all other five than we are. And I think we have an opportunity to graduate from being uh, the capital of Latin America to being the epicenter of capital. And I think that's something that I've been focusing on. That's awesome. Well, sir, I want to thank you thank so you much brother. for this great conversation. Great, it's great being number two. I love it. <laughs> uh, and just one person's going to hear about it, so it's all good. Uh, all right. Well, don't go too hard on it. <laughs> nah, it's, good. it's all good. Uh, well, uh, again, thank you so much for joining yeah. us on Empower 305 and allowing us to record this actually in your office. So great in acoustics. Our, in our Compassville Tech Talk studio. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You got it. Well, uh, we're also grateful to you, uh, good folks at home who have stuck with us this far. Uh, so, you know, let's keep this going. Your support really matters to us. Follow the City of Miami on all of our social media platforms and make sure that you share, like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, subscribe. Uh, you know, we, we do this for you to empower 305. We'll see you next time. Thank you.